Easter eggs! Infinity War is crammed full of enough of them to make the Easter Bunny literally crap himself with joy. This video contains spoilers for Avengers Infinity War. You have been warned. Three, two, one. Smash. Okay, so we're breaking down this film like Thanos breaks down Loki's windpipe. This is Will for What Culture, and here are 35 Easter eggs and references hidden throughout Avengers Infinity War. Okay, let's bash these out. 35. The new Marvel Studios logo. As with the pre-release of the 10 year celebration video that Marvel released to YouTube, the usual Marvel Studios logo at the start of Infinity War has been taken over with a red 10 in the place of the I and the O of Studios to mark the occasion. It's just one of those small touches, like removing the fanfare from the MCU animated opening, that makes this feel like something new and different. Number 34. The We Have a Hulk callback. Loki ends up surrendering the Tesseract to Thanos at the beginning of the film, mostly by coercion, but not before making a stand against him, borrowing Tony Stark's We Have a Hulk line from the Avengers as Banner transforms and attacks Thanos from behind. Loki's untimely fate is also met by Thanos' line, No Resurrections This Time, calling back to Loki's death fakeout in the Dark World. Number 33. Banner Does a Silver Surfer after Hulk is sent from the Asgardian ship back to Earth, he crashes into the Sanctum Sanctorum, transforming back into Banner after the impact to pass on the message. And the way he smashes into Doctor Strange's headquarters mirrors how the Silver Surfer lands in the Sanctum himself in the comics. Number 32, Morgan Stark. When Strange first visits Tony Stark, he's in discussion with Pepper about children, and Tony mentions that they'd have a son named after Pepper's Uncle Morgan. That name is taken from the comics, as Morgan Stark was the cousin of Tony Stark, who believed that Howard Stark cheated his father Edward Stark out of the Stark company fortune and tried to steal the company from Tony Stark. That's a lot of Starks. Number 31, The Battle of New York. Though the Avengers very much showed Loki as the master of his own plan to invade Earth, Infinity War changes that story somewhat as Bruce Banner confirms to Tony Stark that it was Thanos who sent Loki to Earth for the invasion. That battle hangs over Stark in particular as an extrapolation of his PTSD storyline that has run through the MCU since Iron Man 2, and it's a clever way to tie Stark and Thanos together in a more tangible way. Number 30, The Ben and Jerry's Joke. As a reflection of just how famous the Avengers have become, even despite the Sokovian Accords and public anxiety about the unregulated and unaccountable superhero behaviour, it's mentioned that Tony Stark has a Ben & Jerry's flavour named in his honour. It's called Stark Raving Hazelnuts as a nod to his volatility, which actually foreshadows his passionate pursuit of Thanos. Wong also mentions there's another Avengers flavour, Hulk a Hulk a Burning Love. Number 29, Peter Parker's Spider Sense. Despite all the bells and whistles that Tony Stark adds to Peter Parker's new spider suit in Homecoming, the one power he was apparently missing was his famous Spider Sense. But he definitely has it in his locker, as his first appearance sees him sense the Black Order ship before he sees it, and then later, he knows the Guardians are coming to Titan before they actually arrive. Number 28, Stan Lee's cameo. Obviously, this being a Marvel movie, Stan Lee gets his usual cameo, appearing in Spider-Man's first sequence. While everyone else loses their sh**, the bus driver, played by Stan Lee, says, What's the matter with you? You never seen a spaceship before? It's not one of the best Lee cameos in the MCU, but it's fun all the same. Number 27, the SpongeBob SquarePants gag. The first time Stark sees the magnificent Ebony Moore in New York, he cuts off the quirky looking villain with a curt get lost Squidward, clearly referencing the fact that the bald headed alien bears a striking resemblance to the melancholic neighbour of SpongeBob SquarePants from Bikini Bottom. Number 26, the Iron Spider. The Iron Spider suit Peter receives comes with a similar colour scheme, functions and the same additional legs that give him added agility and stability in the battle sequences from the comics. Originally, Stark gives Peter the suit in the Civil War comic, but better late than never. Number 25, Happy Trails. After giving Peter Parker the Iron Spider, Tony Stark attempts to protect Parker by sending him back home. Unbeknownst to Peter, he activates the suit's parachute and tries to send Peter back to Earth, with a simple farewell borrowed from Bruce Willis's John McClane in Die Hard. Happy trails, Hans. Number 24, Nomad. After he gave up his shield at the end of Civil War, Steve Rogers is no longer Captain America. He no longer looks or even dresses like he once did, and it definitely feels like his new existence underground is a nod to the time he spent as Nomad in the comics. Number 23, Defender. The now teenage Groot has a handheld video console in his hands that he's so obsessed with, he basically ignores his duties. The game he's playing is revealed to be Defender on the Atari. That's no accident in terms of game choices as the plot basically mirrors Infinity War. In the game, the object is to destroy alien invaders while also protecting people on the ground from abduction. In other words, it's a pocket version of Infinity War. 
Number 22, Kevin Bacon. In Guardians of the Galaxy, Star-Lord mentions that he is a big Footloose and Kevin Bacon fan and also mentions that Bacon was a great hero who once saved an entire town through only dance. When Thor mentions the Avengers as Earth's mightiest defenders, Mantis says, just like Kevin Bacon, calling back to Peter's accidental insistence that Bacon is a real-life hero. Number 21, Peter Dinklage. After getting his ass kicked, Thor sets out to find a weapon with enough power to deal significant damage to Thanos. His answer is to head to Nidavellir, the realm of dwarves to ask the king of dwarves played by Dinklage to forge him a weapon. Peter fully channels Tyrion in this performance with a very similar accent. Number 20, Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker, the Thunder Axe, is from the comics and is the weapon given to Beta Ray Bill after he defeated Thor in a battle and rightly won his hammer. Feeling guilty, he instead took Stormbreaker as a reward from Odin, which was forged from the same Uru metal that we see being used in Infinity War. Number 19, the Harry Potter reference points. Strangely enough, there are a number of direct parallels to the Harry Potter movies in some of the sequences in Infinity War. First, Vision struggling in pain when the Mind Stone senses something wrong is very much like Harry's scar talking to him. Then the use of magic to transform perilous spells into harmless butterflies in the Titan battle. On top of that, the way the characters at the end fade out is very much like Voldemort's death, and Thanos meeting the infant Gamora after he completes his mission is very much like a redo of the King's Cross sequence at the end of the Deathly Hallows. Number 18, The Return of the Chitari. Despite the fact that Loki led them to their defeat and apparent total destruction in the Avengers, the Chitari, Thanos' hired army of cannon fodder, make their grand reappearance in a flashback scene establishing how Thanos adopted Gamora. We see them invading her home planet in the same way the alien race invaded New York. Number 17, Arrested Development. As some pre-release leaks confirmed, one of the glass display cases in the collector's home houses a familiar looking blue man in cut-off shorts. Clearly, it's a nod to the time in Arrested Development when Tobias Funk blew himself. Number 16, Drax and Mantis incapacitated. In the scene on Nowhere, when Thanos discovers that the Guardians are there to stop him getting the reality stone, he incapacitates Drax by turning his body into blocks and similarly uses the stone to turn Mantis' body into ribbons. This echoes a sequence in the comic that sees him deal with his brother Eros and Nebula in a similar fashion. Number 15, Grimace. At one point when Tony Stark comes face to face with Thanos, the notorious quip lover calls the purple alien Grimace. This is a reference to the dim-witted purple character from McDonald's marketing. Number 14, White Wolf. On our first visit to Wakanda, we see Bucky's return and just as he was in the Black Panther post credit scene, he's referred to as the White Wolf and is given a new vibranium arm. In the comics, White Wolf was an orphan whose parents were killed in a plane crash. He was bullied by other Wakandans for his skin colour, but rose to the position of head of the Wakandan secret police, before he jealously clashed with T'Challa and ended up being exiled. Number 13, Stranger's Torture Scene. In Jonathan Hickman's Infinity comic arc, which is partly the foundation for the Infinity War, Thanos invades Earth looking for the Infinity Stones and uses Ebony Moore to find out information on their location. He tortures Doctor Strange to find out what he can and the good Doctor turns over the stone under his protection. The scene with him being pierced by Moore's needle projections is very much like the scene in the comic where Moore manages to torture his way into Strange's mind. Number 12, Aliens. Just as he did in Captain America's Civil War, Spider-Man turns to his film fandom to help himself and his Avengers teammates out of a sticky situation. He borrows the sequence from that classic horror sci-fi by sucking Ebony Moore out of a breach in the ship's hull and allowing him to be frozen and die in the harsh environment of space. He then drops another reference to aliens slightly later, warning that if any aliens appear and try to lay eggs in his chest, he won't be impressed. Number 11, Flash Gordon. After they all meet on Titan, Tony Stark tries to insult Star-Lord by calling him Flash Gordon. That, of course, references the 1930s comic strip character who is an Earthling who ends up kidnapped and taken into space against his free will, which is exactly the approach Marvel has taken with their character in the movies. Number 10, Vormir. After months of speculation, it turns out that every prediction about the location of the Soul Stone in Infinity War was wrong. It's revealed that the map was once seen by Gamora, but then destroyed to keep it out of her father's hands. Eventually, she reveals that the stone is hidden on Vormir, which is actually a planet from the comics, located in the Kree galaxy. Number 9, Red Skull Returns. One of the most surprising revelations in Infinity War was the unexpected return of Red Skull, who vanished at the end of Captain America the First Avenger. He appears on Vormar as the guardian of the secret Soul Stone and as a sort of ethereal figure caught between life and death. Number 8, The Biblical Reference. The sacrifice that Thanos is instructed to make of the only thing he loves, Gamora, very much feels like a modern retelling of the biblical story of Abraham, who was commanded by God to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. In that story, God intervenes just at the last moment, but of course Thanos and Gamora's story lacks that salvation. 
Number 7. The Crimson Bands of Cytorak In the battle on Titan, Doctor Strange conjures one of his most famous spells from the comics. The Crimson Bands of Cytorak incarnation sends red-coloured energy bands out of Strange's hands like whips to bind Thanos, and it's clearly a strong spell as he struggles to fight Strange off even before Mantis dulls his brain. In Infinity War, the bands look just as they traditionally do in the comics. Number 6. One in the Eye It's a fairly easy one to miss, but during the same Titan fight sequence, Spider-Man recaptures a moment from the comics. Taking his chance to try and slow Thanos in his tracks, he shoots webs unexpectedly into the Mad Titan's face, basically reliving this panel from the comics. Number 5. Killing Vision Though he doesn't have the Mind Stone with him in the comics, Thanos kills Vision when the pair meet. Vision actually seems to have the upper hand on Thanos as the Titan is preoccupied fighting the Hulk, but when he attacks him for a second time from behind, Thanos is ready and counterattacks, ripping out his mechanical innards. Not only does that reflect how Vision usually attacks his enemies through his phase attacks, but it is also mirrored when Thanos removes the Mind Stone from Vision's head and takes a load of wires with him. Number 4. The Snap Who'd have thought Disney, a family-friendly company, could ever adapt something that basically killed off trillions of people at once? But they went and ended Infinity War with the snap. In the comics, Thanos clicks his fingers in order to show off to death in the hope it will seduce her. And just as it does in the film, the click wipes out half of existence. Number 3. Thanos' Peaceful Ending If the snap and its aftermath was a bold decision, the final shot before the credits is a huge f*** you to the fans from Thanos. When he's asked earlier in the movie what he'll do once he's got the stones and successfully wiped out half of existence, he says he will finally stop and sit down to watch the sunrise. And that's precisely what we get to see at the end. Despite the fact that he's just murdered half of every race, Thanos basically goes to sit on his porch to chill out, smiling to himself wistfully as if he's just completed some menial but satisfying task. Number 2. The New Avengers Theme After the devastating blow of what happens when Thanos clicks his fingers and we see him smirk, the film ends in silence for a while before the theme music kicks in, almost as if to help us spread the emotion of the moment even more. And then there debuts a more somber, sad version of the Avengers theme as if painfully mourning the fallen. Number 1. Captain Marvel, mother f***er Perhaps because of the emotional impact of the end of the film, there's only one post credit scene. We get to see Nick Fury and Maria Hill driving through New York before a car in front of them crashes and they investigate to find that the driver has mysteriously vanished. After a little more looking, Hill herself fades out of existence as Thanos has clicked half the world away in Wakanda, and a panicked Fury goes into his bag to retrieve what appears to be a souped up pager. He fades away too, but not before he manages to send a distress signal. As the camera is about to fade, we see a confirmation that the message was sent and the screen shows Captain Marvel's logo. Let the hype floweth. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Don't forget to subscribe below and also the people who made this video, they're right here. So go and follow them and give them some love. If you want to see more content, there's probably some stuff flowing up above my head. Why not check it out? It could be fun. I'm not your dad.